I have a small confession to make. Well, more of a tale of extreme bad luck. My iPhone 11 Pro shooting this show has a small ding in its display down the bottom, along with a small crack. Yes, the phone was cased and it only dropped 12 inches as I was crouched down, but by some complete fluke, the edge of the display here managed to hit the concrete. I think if I tried to drop it at the right angle to do this, I'd have failed 99 times out of 100. And what happened is what happened. I don't blame Apple since the iPhone seem on the whole to be quite robust. I don't blame myself either. The phone was in a case, albeit a fairly minimalist one, and the drop was evidently small. It was just sheer bad luck. On the bright side, the small ding has zero effect on usability and it's hard to see unless you're actually looking for it. But it did get me thinking about repair costs should the damage here have been worse. In general, it is somewhat terrifying to buy a £1,000 phone and then a small real-world accident puts a crack in the display and you're looking at a hefty bill. In the case of the iPhone 11 Pro shooting this show, Apple want £280 or so to replace the display. Ouch. And trying to buy the screen from other suppliers is actually higher, £300. Clearly there's more going on here than meets the eye, hence this show. Now what about other makes and models? I've been doing some research. Uh, my other dependable smartphone here with my second SIM, the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, buying the display assembly alone is £220. The Samsung itself quotes £249 all in, including labour. What about the latest Galaxy S10 Plus? That's uh, slightly more, £259, repaired by Samsung. Jump across to the Google Pixel 3 XL, and that bucket notch display assemblage, the component is £144. Again, plus quite a bit of labour, of course, but at least prices are going slightly down with age. Note that all of these displays so far are OLED in some form, and it's perhaps understandable that this technology costs more. It's why you don't find AMOLED screens on budget phones and only patchily in the mid-range. So let's jump across to the world of LCD, starting with the iPhone 8. £32? So much cheaper. Maybe economies of scale on the iPhone case. Having said that, as an aside, while I can understand iPhone and Samsung flagship owners living with small cracks in their super expensive AMOLED displays, for the sake of 32 quid plus a bit of labour, I can't understand why the relatively easily disassembled iPhone 6, 7, 8 owners live with damage. We've all seen friends and family doing this after all. Just get that LCD screen repaired. Anyway, what about the LCD screen in the wider sealed Android world? The Nokia 7 Plus, which I loved, has its LCD screen coming at £75. The uh, Moto G7 Plus here, a year old and LCD, has a display that's shown as £35, which seems good value. Though, as with the Nokia and most phones other than older iPhones, extra labour will be needed for separating the phone with heat and actually doing the repair. In fact, I can't emphasise this enough. I'm quoting screen prices here on the whole, i.e. the components, but an actual repair by someone who knows what they're doing will cost quite a bit more. Modern smartphone displays come with various components screwed and glued to their underside, and in many repair cases, these need moving over to the new panel. And this is all extremely fiddly and therefore time-consuming and expensive. Even a so-called easy repair on an older iPhone, come on, most of us have changed an iPhone 4, 5 or 6 battery for a family member, is still up to an hour of work, skilled work perhaps. Having watched many teardown repair videos online, I am sure that most modern smartphone repairs would take me, for example, longer still. You need super eyesight, perfect hand-eye coordination and the right tools and right workspace. And even then, ribbon cables that you have to make sure not to slice through, glass front and back that might easily crack or break as you prise it off, and the bane of the repairer's life, different size, tiny screws to keep organised or you're, well, screwed, and so on. All of which made me realise three things. One, the repair prices quoted by Apple and Samsung aren't actually that crazy. To take a screen assembly, so outer glass, capacitive touch layer, high definition AMOLED plus assorted attached components, that physically cost £200, then tear down your phone, fit the replacement and rebuild all for less than 300 doesn't sound too bad if you think about it. The trick, of course, is not to break the screen or your £1,000 smartphone in the first place. 
Two, just as I'm doing right now, I understand why some people live with a cracked screen. OK, perhaps not something like this, but small cracks and blemishes just aren't worth potentially hundreds of pounds of repair cost. More if AMOLED, less if LCD, when the phone still works perfectly and there's no impediment to operation. Finally, three, I'm going to take you back a couple of phone shows to number 386 to that Fairphone 3. A phone designed to be taken apart, designed to be repaired by end users, designed to be pseudo-modular. A new screen assembly for the Fairphone 3 is £75, but that's it, period. There's no outside labour needed, no extra tools needed. You pop the old screen off and the new one on, done. 10 minutes tops which is somewhat extraordinary in 2020, and hats off again to the Fairphone team. Again, having a phone that comes apart this easily does also mean no intrinsic waterproofing, of course, but the gain in repairability is enormous and easily compensates, I think. I'd like to see more phones which can be repaired at home at reasonable cost and with a minimum of downtime. In the meantime, my, again, threefold thought processes for my dinged iPhone 11 Pro. Number one, Use a case that's thicker and more protective. <coughs> Mouse. See phone show 381. Lesson learned. Number two, leave the phone as is until I manage to bash it again or the crack spreads, in which case that Apple charge, including a premium AMOLED part, a truckload of teardown labour and the restoration of water and dust proofing actually looks quite reasonable after all, not least compared to other Apple repairs, including a cracked rear glass, which is £546. I think it's just a placeholder price. Apparently, I wonder how often people take them up on that. I'm guessing not many. And three, want to be luckier. I'll do my best.